Hello, hello! I'm PJ Scribbles. I'm a professional illustrator that's been using Clip Studio Paint for over four years. And today I'm going to be teaching you how you can speed up your workflow using Clip Studio Paint's Paint Bucket tool. So let's get right into it. I also have a text version of this tutorial linked down in the description if you want to check it out and save it for later. So the first step to mastering any tool is understanding why you're using it. You don't want to be using a screwdriver when you could be using a drill. So before I start filling my illustration with any colors, I'm going to be creating a base to work with. There's two main reasons why I'm doing this. The character that I'm coloring in has a white t-shirt, which means once I start using my fill tools, it'll actually be really hard for me to see which areas I've colored in and which ones I haven't. I also want to create a base so that way as I start shading, my colors won't bleed outside of the lines. So looking at this piece, off the bat I noticed there are some gaps in my line art that's going to start causing problems with the normal paint bucket tool. Our goal is to color as much of the drawing as quickly as possible and avoid wasting time by clicking each individual section of the drawing to fill. Which is why I'm so excited to show off the number one tool that's made my workflow so much faster. It's called the Enclose and Fill tool. Just like the lasso selection tool, the enclose fill tool is a lasso tool that colors in the areas you select, and it's much faster than the normal paint bucket tool. Although with the default settings there are a few things that don't quite look right. You'll notice that the tool avoided coloring both the hands and a good portion of the hair, which is not what we're looking for. However, the space between the head and the hand being filled is to be expected, and I'll show you how to avoid this in a moment. If you're someone who doesn't like having to play with a bunch of settings on tools and just wants something that works right out of the box, I highly recommend this cupcake tool. Here's a clip of me using it the same way as before, selecting the whole character and just seeing what happens. You'll notice that this tool automatically fills in most of the areas that the default enclose and fill tool didn't. And the only area that it didn't really color in was this little section of the hair, which really isn't that big of a deal, seeing as I can just go in and color in that little gap between the lines and the background so I can use the cupcake tool again and it'll fill it in perfectly. You can quickly find this cupcake tool in the Clip Studio Paint Asset Store by searching up the ID that I'll leave right here on screen and I'll also link it in the description below so you can easily find it and all you have to do is download it and then once it is in your materials panel you can click and drag it and bring it into your tools menu. However, if for whatever reason this tool isn't available in the future, I'll also give you some super easy settings that you can use that'll give you the same results. In the tool property menu, go to the section that says Tark Color and select the option that says Enclose All Areas Including Transparency. We'll also go to another section called Close Gap, which detects how much of a gap there is between my lines. And we're going to set this to the maximum. And finally, on the area scaling section, we're going to set it to negative 0.10. Uh, this will keep the tool from creating too much overflow. And this is the result, doing the same thing as before. For the rest of this tutorial, I will be using the edited version of the Enclose and Fill tool. However, the Cupcake tool works just fine. Here's how to get the best results from the Enclose and Fill tool. So before we move on to flats, I'll show you a way to avoid overfilled areas like these so that way you can minimize as much cleanup as possible. It might be tempting when you get areas like this just to bring out the eraser, but you really don't need to. All you have to do is go over your lines a little bit more closely than before, and you'll notice that you won't have as much cleanup work as before. I love using this tool for organic looking spotted light effects and shading. It gives me a good base to work with and allows me to make unique looking shadows that, that don't look stiff and out of place, which would be the case if I was doing it by hand. I also use this tool for all my stickers that need a flat background to them, and it's great for those pieces that need a quick background fill that I can adjust and change later. A quick tip for those who struggle to pick out colors, I highly recommend coloring in your sketches before you even start your line art. This will save you so much time and stress, and I've noticed that many artists get overwhelmed in the coloring stage because there's just too many possibilities. By coloring in your sketch, you get to test out a whole bunch of different color palettes before you've even decided to finalize your work. I do this to also check my composition and colors before fully committing to an illustration. It lets me see if there's any potential mistakes or areas that might be hard to read visually. Now that we have a good base to work with, I'll lock the transparency on my base layer. This allows me to edit the colors within the base, but keeps me from coloring outside of the lines. 
I'm going to be coloring directly on this layer. The reason behind this is because I don't want to use a clipped layer above because there's a possibility that if I at whatever point accidentally click outside of my lines, it'll actually fill in everything around my character. This is a lot of extra data, and if you work on large canvases like me, it'll eventually start lagging out your program, and at the end of the day, it's just a lot easier to avoid this by just coloring on it directly. Now, the next tool that we'll be using is called the Refer to Other Layers Fill. And I'll be using this tool because it'll detect my line art and makes it, it'll make it a lot easier for me to color in all of my lines. It might be tempting to use the eraser tool if you've made a mistake. It's second nature for us as artists. However, if you decide to use the eraser on a layer you've locked the transparency of, you won't be able to go over the same area until you unlock the layer and color in the section again. In essence, when you use a, an eraser, you've told the program to erase that section completely. The point of using a base is to, to create an area that won't go outside the bounds, and when you erase, you start editing those bounds. This is great if later on you find that you have some excess sections that you would like to get rid of, but it's not so great when you do it unintentionally. There are some handy features with this tool that I really enjoy. If you click and drag an area, you can fill in a bunch of areas all at once. So instead of clicking a bunch of different times on a complicated section like the hair, I can just click and drag and it'll fill it all in at once. It's a super handy feature and you should try it out when you're filling in complex areas. Now you've probably noticed in the last clip I went over these little, these little gaps with another tool. This is the Paint Unfilled Areas tool. With the color you want to fill the gaps with selected, you can quickly go over these areas super quickly, and this is perfect if you have line art that has a lot of texture and you're noticing it's creating a bunch of these little unfilled pixel fragments. In the next clip, I've created some larger graphs, so it's easier to see this tool in action. I rarely change my fill settings, but I'll always have my close gap at the maximum setting, and I'll turn off the area scaling when it overflows a section like this. Every so often, I'll change my tolerance settings, but even then, I don't really change much when it comes to de the default settings of these tools. Now, going over our last refill tool, we have the refer only to editing layer. I've made a new layer above my color layer and clipped it so it only affects my illustration. I'll use the refer to only editing layer tool to, for quick overlay effects or fills that will balance all my colors together. Using this tool, it fills the whole layer completely and doesn't ignore any areas, which means it's super useful if you want to cover a whole canvas and you don't want to be going over those areas individually. So here's a quick demonstration of me using all the tools I've mentioned in this video. Thank you so much for joining me along. I hope you learned a few new things. And if you're interested in my work, you can find all my socials in the description below. And if you want to find the written version of this tutorial, you can also find it in the description so you can like and favorite it so you can find it later. It also lets me know that you like these tutorials and to make more of them in the future. And with that, I hope to see you again soon. Bye-bye.